Welcome to Using Grids and Guides in InDesign. So in this layout we are setting up, we're going to add bleed lines. These are used to print bleed photos to the edge of the page. And notice these are all locked, so if I change one, they all change. And we're going to set up a slug at the bottom of the page. And the slug is for printer information. We've also created margins which set the outside edge. There should be no text past any margins. And our column guides, which provide the grid structure for our page. If you ever forget to create some of those guides, you can add margins in the properties panel. You can also go to layout, margins and columns, and file document setup. Just a reminder that none of these grids, guides, or margins print. So down here in blue is our slug. Our bleed line is red. These are our margins, and these are our three columns. Your column guides provide design grid structure. So in things like a photo layout, images and text need to remain within that structure. Let's take a look at this document so we can see what I mean. So again, we've got the same guides we had before. We do have a nine column grid set up. And what we want is all of our photos and our text to align to that grid. So in this case, this little part of the photo is stretched beyond that grid. So I need to shift and command and just get that within the grid. Same thing with this photo. Just aligning everything so they reach the edge of that grid. Nothing on the outside of that grid. The same rule applies for text. So I can increase the size or decrease the size so that it better works within that column grid system. In some cases, I might need to even rewrite my headline so that it fits. So once you've established your grid structure and use it to check the horizontal space between content, you can use the document grid to check the vertical space. First, we need to set up how we want that document grid to work. So we will go to InDesign, Preferences, and Grids, and we're going to set up a grid line every one pica with one subdivision. This means we will have a one pica document grid for this design. I can have grids in back, but since we have photos, I'm going to leave that unchecked. So I'll hit OK. To show our guides, we want to select Command Apostrophe or View Grids and Guides, and then it would be Show or Hide Document Grid. Now I've set mine to be red so that we could see them really closely for this example. Um, you can change that in that same Grids Preferences. So we're going to zoom in, and you can see this photo is right below that one pica. Each of these squares is one pica. And so I want this one to be about right there. And then these two photos would be even. Now if you see that green line I'm getting, that's a smart guide. So let, that lets me know those photos are even. So sometimes your photos aren't perfectly aligned on this document grid, but you can still use it to determine everything being one pica apart. With text, you actually use the descenders, or the lowest part of your text, to make sure that that is where you're measuring from. Now we've managed to have everything measured both horizontally and vertical. Now in this design, we did use a one pica grid. But for some designs, you might want to take a more modern approach and look at a half pica grid. Additionally, when you get into larger design projects, you might want to consider levels of spacing so that related content might be closer, say a half a pica 
or one pica, and unrelated content is two or more picas. To hide these, I can just hit Command Apostrophe. Another guide I can use is my ruler guides. So I can drag these down. If I want them to appear across a double page spread, I just hold the Command key, and we can see I might need to move that photo down a little bit. You can also pull from this side and use that to help align some of your content. So that is using both column and document guides in InDesign.